Roman whistling bullets were an intimidating and deadly invention. The regular lead bullets the Romans crafted to fire from slings could pack nearly as much punch as a 44 Magnum bullet fired from a gun. Was the famous battle between David and Goliath the earliest recorded example of the adage, don't bring a knife to a gunfight? Instead being, don't bring a sword to a sling fight. Slings have been used for battle and conflict for thousands of years. Some of the earliest archaeological discoveries we've found so far of these deadly but simple weapons were discovered in Israel and are dated from around 7,200 years ago, attributed to the early Chalcolithic period between 5800 and 4500 BCE. And that's just the earliest we've discovered so far. Slings were usually made of organic materials and fibres, and are extremely hard to preserve naturally, so would just degrade over time, leaving archaeologists to rely on discovering purposeful ammunition. Sling projectiles started off as just being stones, and slings being much less work to craft and maintain than bows and arrows would make a far more accessible option and easy to carry. Plus, the ammunition being just stones were readily available almost anywhere without needing to be crafted, so they were most likely used a long time before we find actual evidence for them. Slings varied in length, as a larger sling could generally generate more speed and distance, but a smaller sling was more accurate, so there was a trade-off depending on what the thrower needed. Pouches also varied in size for different sized projectiles, as smaller projectiles could go faster and penetrate skin easier, but larger projectiles would have more force, allowing them to damage or impair armour more easily. The famous David and Goliath story reportedly took place around 1020 BCE, and from a skilled sling thrower it doesn't matter how big a person is, they would have no chance against a solid hit from a sling projectile. <laughs> During the time of the ancient Greeks, by around 500 BCE, lead was starting to be used for sling projectiles being denser and able to be crafted to a more uniform shape. They were even more deadlier and consistent than the random sizes of stones. National Geographic reported that experiments conducted in Germany showed that a 50 gram Roman bullet hurled by a trained slinger has only slightly less stopping power than a 44 magnum bullet fired from a handgun. It could reach speeds of up to 100 miles per hour, 160 kilometers an hour, and a trained slinger could hit a target smaller than a human being from 120 meters away with relative ease. By the time of the Roman Empire, lead sling bullets were heavily used as the primary sling projectiles for warfare. Thousands of lead sling bullets have been found around many battle sites dug up by archaeologists. Hundreds of bullets could be found at a single battle site. At many of these sites from around the year 200 CE onwards, we find many smaller lead sling bullets around half of the size of the standard lead projectiles, but all having a drilled hole around 4mm in diameter and around 5mm deep, indicating a different function from the usual lead bullets. They are often known as whistling sling bullets, as the hole in them allows them to create a sort of whistling whizzing sound as they fly through the air. away like a bird <laughs> only more deadly <laughs> perfect the regular lead bullets were almost silent unless one whizzed right past your head no. silent 
so it appears that these whistling bullets thrown by potentially hundreds of soldiers at a time aided to scare the enemy using psychological warfare, as well as being a potentially lethal projectile. It would have been a terrifying sound to hear coming towards you. Listen to the sounds of them zooming past the camera setup around the target and imagine hundreds of soldiers doing this. There may also have been other possible intended uses for the 4mm diameter hole that have been hypothesised. One of these possible functions is that instead of a conventional sling, they could also be thrown with a staff sling created with around a 4mm diameter point on top in which the bullet was loaded, which would be a bit faster to reload than a conventional sling, allowing more to be fired in succession, and may help explain why the holes always seem to be around 4mm in diameter, as if the point on a staff sling was a standardised size to fit in a 4mm hole, soldiers wouldn't need to make custom sizes and they could be mass produced allowing them to be handed out to anyone with that type of staff sling. It twittered. I heard it. <laughs> Another potential function is that they could insert some poison within the hole, so if the bullet penetrates a person's body they could also get poison from the inside. It may even be possible that all three of these functions were utilised, making them whistling poison bullets fired at a rapid rate. Jürg Sprav from the Slingshot channel conducted some experiments showing that a regular lead bullet couldn't penetrate a relatively thick item of clothing draped over ballistic gel. But the whistling bullet being smaller penetrated the clothing and into the ballistic gel with ease. Ballistic gel is used to simulate the density of human and animal muscle tissue, so this lends a bit more weight to the poison hypothesis. But we haven't found any direct evidence to suggest they were used with poison yet, but it appears that it was a possibility if the Romans had thought of this utility. These whistling bullets were a brilliant idea thought up by the Roman Empire. We don't know yet which person came up with this idea originally, but they added another dimension to warfare, with that whistling, whizzing sound affecting people psychologically even if a target was widely missed, and the potential of poison use makes them even deadlier, like a solid projectile equivalent of poison darts. I wonder if one day we find evidence for this extra utility of these awesome little projectiles. So what do you think? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Well, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video. Please also consider supporting me on Patreon or become a channel member so I can dedicate more time to the channel. Have an amazing day and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care of yourselves out there.